Hey, welcome back. This is a very cool story. NASA has unveiled plans to test a nuclear-powered rocket that could fly astronauts eventually to Mars faster and further than the current rocket technology. Let's bring in CTV science and tech expert Dan Riskin with more on this. Dan, uh, the big takeaway here, what do you think? Well, the big takeaway is that uh, NASA is really figuring out how to get to Mars. I mean, this is one of the big questions. It, it takes a lot of rocket fuel to get all the way to Mars. And the thing is, once you get to Mars, you got to come home again, or at least that's the plan at this stage uh, for most people. And so uh, how do you make it work? And current rocket technology requires a whole lot of propellant, a whole lot of chemicals that you then burn. You need to bring oxygen. You need all that stuff. Maybe you can find some oxygen in water, uh, which of course is H2O when you're at Mars, but the technologies that exist right now make it very difficult. And so thinking outside the box, thinking about other ways to make a rocket go, may make it easier to go to places like Mars and beyond. And so this is a call that a new type of rocket is going to be developed. This is called a nuclear thermal rocket. And uh, basically the idea here is that you have a nuclear power plant on your rocket mm. and it produces a ton of heat. And that heat is used to heat up your fuel, which then turns to a gas and gets sprayed out the nozzle. And uh, according to their calculations, this can be anywhere from two to five times more efficient uh, than the existing technology. So probably faster, but certainly more efficient, which means you can get farther for a certain, you know, on a tank, so to speak. Yeah, I'm curious, any dangers involving having a nuclear power plant on board a rocket? Oh, what could possibly go wrong, Todd? It's just a nuclear power plant in space. You know, it's, there are two ways to think about this. On the one hand, yeah, obviously you don't want to have that accidentally crash and land in a metropolis or something like that. But the other thing is that nuclear power is and always has been part of space technology. You can't light a campfire on an alien planet because there's no oxygen in the air to burn it, right? So you have to bring everything. And so if you want to have a battery, if you want to have any kind of power uh, happening in space, you have to think about technologies that can work without the kinds of things that we take for granted here on Earth, just as we inhale them. And so, um, you know, perseverance, uh, curiosity, the rovers that drive around on Mars, those have nuclear engines inside them. There's a nuclear, a small nuclear uh, power supply inside those things with uranium. And so already we're putting these, uh, these nuclear uh, disasters waiting to happen, so to speak, or these these nuclear components, we're putting those on alien worlds. And so uh, the, the genie's out of the bottle, so to speak. And so this is just another step in that direction. And there have been a lot of discussions about, you know, let's get nuclear uh, weapons out of space and let's make sure that that doesn't happen. But in terms of using nuclear power to, to move the space program forwards, it's been pretty much greenlit by everyone. And it's certainly the dominant mode that's used by the US, but it's never been used as a rocket propellant before. And that's what's different here. This isn't just a little power plant to give you electricity for your rover. This is actually heating up a liquid to have, uh, you know, to have the exhaust come out of your rocket and propel you forward, which presumably requires more energy, hotter temperatures, and other things that make it perhaps a little bit riskier. And that's going to be part of what they need to test. Yeah, planning to test that engine by 2027. We'll see if that timeline sticks. Dan, always good to see you in the meantime. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Dan Riskin, our science and tech specialist.